Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. You know how it is before we get started. Welcome. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, we wait. We wait. Please click the subscribe button, click the notification bell as well, just so that you know every single time I upload, we'd love to have you here. Listen, here we have a good time. In this neck of the woods, we have a good time and we'd love to have you here. Um, this is a very different video for me, but I had to do this video. I had to do this video, man. I got a question in my community tab amongst the real talk questions and all of that. And this question was so deep, took me so big, big, big down memory lane. And I had to do it as a singular video by itself, standalone. Yes, I had to do it as a standalone video. So this is the question and I will attach the video form from Tando with regards to this question. She asked me this question in my community tab the other week and she said, actually, maybe roll it, roll it. My name is Tando and I'm absolutely in love with the YouTube channel. You tend to give such great advice and I was just hoping you would do the same for women like myself in their 20s. Anything that we can use from careers to relationships, friendships and just our own self growth. Thank you so much. So she said experiences that shaped you in your 20s from love, career, friendship, sex, finances, zonge, rekopadi, topics, sesireas, do basically meaning uh, we want serious topics please. So. I actually went down my memory lane in my head and I thought, let me give you specific experiences that changed me fundamentally uh, to be the woman that I am today. Um, the experiences that I went through, the friendships I've developed, the relationships, the good, the bad times, all of it. And it shaped my 20s big time and is a large part of who I am today. So that's what we're going to talk about. Now, in my early 20s, I was in university. One of the biggest, biggest experiences for me that uh, opened my eyes with university was the development of really, really good, like, like lifelong uh friendships but also at the same time university opened my eyes to responsibility and it opened my eyes to my femininity and i'll tell you why because i'll tell you the experiences so when i went to university i was literally that girl who was a tomboy growing up so i wore those jt1 sports bras all the way up until I got to university and then I made a really really good friend so we're taking off the friendship box here so I made a really good friend who resides in Botswana she's from Botswana and her name is Dimpo and she even now we're still very good friends we talk on a weekly basis and she's the one who was just like um good sis I mean, you're cute and everything with your jeans and your Puma sneakers and your sweaters and everything, but your boobs looking kind of flat. And I'm just like, what do you mean? And then she was like, listen, gather some money together and we're going to go shopping. She introduced me to push-up bras. That's what I mean. So she introduced me to the proper bras that clip on in the back, the ones that we're wearing now, the ones that I'm wearing now. And let me tell you, how that moment changed my life even till now i remember at least twice a year i have that conversation with somebody whether i'm having it with a teenager in their 19s whatever whatever or early 20s or whatever i always manage to slide this topic into conversation somewhere and it goes to show that it made a fundamental dent in my mind and it'll always be there why? Because it, it introduced me to my femininity. I was very uh, tomboyish, not to say that that's a bad thing, but I was always in slouches and all of that. Um, but as soon as I wore a push-up bra, I saw myself differently. I walked differently. I changed the way I dress. At this point, I was starting to show a little bit more skin and I enjoyed that. Uh, but also at the same time, I felt very feminine just by looking at myself in the mirror and I loved that for me. Uh, secondly, the friendships that I made in university were amazing. So I have two very good friends from university that unfortunately we reside, we all reside in different countries. So you've got Dimpo's in Botswana and I've got Marsha who's in, uh, 
Zim and there's me in South Africa. Uh, they are the people that um, from university saw the real me. Uh, they were we, we went through so many moments together. We had the the parties, the drunken nights, the this, the this. But then there were those moments where we were sitting and we we're studying together. Marsha and I had I have a memory of Marsha and I on so many occasions sitting on her balcony. Uh, writing our thesis for our postgrad and all of that, writing our papers and all of that with wine in one hand or sometimes it was gin or after that, after like accomplishing a chapter or two, we'd go out that night and party and all of that. Even till today, we're very, very, very good friends, even though we've grown into, you know, women who are doing their own thing, who have got their own careers and all of that, but we're still very good friends and I feel like those are the friendships. You know, you think that you'll take some friendships from high school and all of that. No, those are the friendships for me that knocked it out the park. Apart from my childhood best friend and all of that, blah, blah, blah. Another thing that uh, university taught me in terms of experiences, of course, in university, there's parties, there's defreshers, there's monati, there's kantakeng, kankatankateng, keng. Yo, you know, there's parties and everything. That exposed me a little bit to myself and what the kind of person that I am. I don't particularly like parties and it was in university where I discovered that about myself. Uh, at Monash there was always a party. I went to Monash. At Monash there was always a party. There was freshers. There was chilling at so and so's house. There was this, this, this. There was always something going on. And I realized I just didn't want to attend them. Not because I felt out of place or I felt out of blah, blah, blah. No, I just didn't feel like they did anything for me. I did attend a few of them, like a beer fest there and a freshers there and all of those kinds of things. But they naturally just didn't do anything for me. And I realized then that this is a side of me that... I, I, I discovered at that point, but it's gone with me throughout my life. I'm not really a party kind of person. I don't uh, get anything out of going to a party. In fact, I feel like it's just really a huge intrusion of my space, <laughs> even though I'm in its space, but I feel like it's a huge intrusion. I feel very uncomfortable. Um, I just normally sit at parties and observe rather than really enjoy. So it's really just not my cup of tea. And university uh, exposed me to parts of myself that I was learning and just understanding that this is the kind of person that I actually am. And then lastly, with university as well, university taught me responsibility. I mean, there's no place then a higher education institution that's going to show you and tell you to your face like we don't care if you don't want to study that's your baby that's your jam that's your thing if you don't want to study if you don't want to come to class don't if you don't want to do your assignments don't we're just gonna it taught me full-on responsibility even on the days where i felt like i really don't feel like going to school today it's raining it's cold it's this made every excuse under the book and i didn't want to go i realized that no one's gonna punish me for not going i'm just gonna get a zero for that mark or for that test or for that quiz or for that whatever and so university taught me to take my dreams and my goals and my studies into my own hands. You know, my future is in my own hands. And if I want to play with this opportunity that my parents have given me, then I'm going to play with it. But if I don't want to, then buckle down and work hard. And that's what I did. Then so. after that, of course, was a very fundamentally ground-shaking, ground-breaking moment of my life. Uh, that taught me so much as well was when I lost my mom. So when I was 22, I lost my mother and was it 22? So when I was 22, I lost my mother and this was one of the most fundamentally groundbreaking, earth shattering uh, moments of my life. But not only did that happen, but also at the same time, it, um, showed me many many things it showed me that life is completely different without a mother no one will love you like a mother no one will nurture and care for you like a mother of course if you are born into a situation where your mother was was that person for you uh obviously all our situations are different and all of that but for me i realized that when my mom left 
my life changed so much. I mean, I still have a parent and thank God for my parent and, you know, touch wood that he stays around for a very long time. But my mother was my, uh, my rock, my core, my center. My mother was that person, man. You're sick. She's saying, listen, I'm gonna make you food. You're this, you're this. You're going through the most. She's that person that I went to and talked to. Uh, she's the person that, I mean, I was in my 20s by the time my mom passed, but I could have a drink with my mom and not really worry that, oh my God, I'm disrespecting her or whatever. Nope, she's the one who actually said, listen, it's the 31st. You're chilling at home. You don't have plans. Let's have a drink. And uh, I developed a very close relationship with my mom. So when she left, I always say left, when she left, everything changed because I realized no one will care for me or worry about me or love me or take care of me like that one person will. So from that, I um, tuned into my emotions of, um, I tuned into another part of me, one that was more resilient, one that was more independent, one that was, you know, I, I had to let go of the dependency of wanting my mom around to tell me what to do and to tell me how to, what. I needed to figure it out myself. My father can only say and do so much. Mothers are different, you know? So, also was opened up to, you know, family members and how people are different and people will treat you differently um, when, your matriarch is gone when your when the center of your world and theirs potentially at that time is gone like people are going to treat you differently and that's okay i i would get angry with family members who would be upset like oh you don't call whatever and i'm thinking but i'm the one who lost my mom here why aren't you calling you know and and then i realized that people don't have to I also tuned into a softer part of me with relation to my little sister, to Naledi. I tuned into another softer part of me because I realized that Naledi got me now. Naledi got me and um, so I developed that side of me. It just came, you know, where I was constantly worried about my sister. Still am till today. Constantly worried about A, B, C, Z, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I grew. When I lost my mom, I grew up and I grew up really quickly. Then of course, after that, another major experience was after that going into the working world. So <laughs> university really did humble me. So we're talking career now. Um, so university really did humble me because I thought as soon as I get that degree, it's black and white, it's there. I'm not gonna struggle to get a job, I did. I was one of the many, many, many students that finish after a higher institution learning and do not get a job. I struggled so much. I did little internships here and there that never really lasted that long. And at some point, I was a tea girl. I, was, I, was, um, I wasn't working and my father said to me, listen, if you want to come make tea at my office, come make me tea. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> I have a degree, sir. And then he's like, well, while, you, while you're looking for work for your degree, you're broke. And you need some experience about being in an office and all of that. And I'll show you some things. And I thought, okay. But at the same time, I was making tea for the people I was working with and all of that. So it was a really humble beginning for me after university because I really did think that... I was going to just jump into getting a job of what I studied for and whatever, and it wasn't that. When I eventually did get a job that, that um, was uh, very different to what I studied for, when I worked at ESCOM, I got a uh, job in uh, knowledge management, which is where I used my communications part of my degree because I did double majoring. So when I used the communications part of my postgrad, I did newsletters and all of that for the position that I was in at ESCOM. And that was great, but then that also exposed me to another industry project management, civil engineering, construction, right? Es ESCOM, right? So I then got excited because as much as I was writing letters and communica uh, communications and all of that, I got an opportunity to go to sites and see what happens on sites and all of that. And I thought, wow, and my father is in this particular industry. So I thought that I love this. 
I want to study this. So that's what I did. I studied project management and then I got into project management. So the lesson behind that one was your career path might change drastically from what you've studied. You can study to be a doctor. You can study to be an accountant, to be a whatever, and then end up a social media influencer. A big one that, that is well known internationally and this and this you can study this and this and this and then end up a judge or end up a graphic designer meanwhile you study mathematics do you know what i mean it taught me that nothing is ever really set in stone nothing is ever really black and white it taught me that you can change you know you're 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 you're, you're evolving man you're growing there's things that are happening you know and you're constantly changing and that was the beauty of it because around that time that's when i started started studying uh things that are in relation to project management because i wanted to do project management in the construction field and that's what I did. I never at any point thought that I'd be sitting here and doing social media as well. Um, and that's okay too. And I actually love it as well. Um, so there's just so many other avenues that I'm going into. And I realized that, man, your life is literally a storybook with different chapters. Every single page you turn, it's a different story. And that's okay. That's what makes it more vibrant. That's what makes it more... So uh, working, my work life taught me that. Um, then, of course, another experience that fundamentally changed my life was uh, buying cars and buying property. Uh, this is when I was exposed to scolotto, to expenses, to uh, uh, paying a bond and, and, and paying a car installment and, um, you know, credit and your name and all of that. I mean, for me, when I was in high, when I was in university, and my father told me, like, listen, if you, if my kids graduate really, really well, I'll get you a car, a little Torosa run around, which was awesome. But the day, and I'm, I'm forever thankful for that. But the day that I got my first car, it was a beautiful car. Uh, if I'll see if I can find a picture and I'll put it here. It was a beautiful car and I loved it. And I love the fact that it said me. I love the fact that it was just, wow. I had been driving for maybe two years or something like that. And then I got myself that car and I thought to myself, wow. But I also introduced, I was introduced to, you know, cost and scoloto. And um, I, again, I had to tune into my responsibility. I have to pay my car installment every month. There's insurance, there's this. And when you get the car, there's like smash and grabs. There's these little details that you know nothing about, right? Until you get them. And that again taught me responsibility, refined my whole thing about responsibility. And then of course, when you get a house, I mean, with a car, it's literally just a responsibility for five years, which is a lot. Of course, it's a lot. But when it comes to a house, which is a responsibility for 20 years, paying a bond every single month for 20 years, unless you can close it much quicker, amen, major responsibility. So that also taught me. So it's those experiences that taught me when I got my first investment property and I did that and I was just like, whoa. And then I worked hard to pay it off before that 20 year period and whatever. And I did that, you know, and that involved side hustles that involved making extra money from this and this that involved blah, blah, whatever it took so that I could, um, have as little debt as possible. But those two things, those, that part of my life taught me a lot about responsibility, but it also taught me that I do enjoy um, seeing the fruits of my labor, seeing, you know, I do enjoy being in my cars, like I enjoy driving my cars now because I feel like these are my cars. I've worked hard to have these cars or to live in at whatever or to have a property or whatever. Um, so for me, those experiences fundamentally changed and altered my life as well. When it comes to relationship to uh, relationships, to end it off. So to end it off, when it comes to relationships, it's really cut and dried. It isn't that complicated. In my twenties, I was about doing me. 
I was about having fun. I was about enjoying. I was not having a relationship that was longer than a year. In fact, there were maybe six, eight months, 10 at the most. And it was just about being having fun. If I got bored, I left. A lot of the things that I would do a lot of the time, I, I used to ghost quite a lot. I used to ghost quite <laughs> a bit. Don't do that, kids. Don't do that. But I used to ghost quite a lot. And um, because I just felt like, if I don't want to do it anymore, I don't. But that also taught me that around that time in my 20s, I just relationships weren't my thing. And uh, then I got to my late 20s and that's when my priorities were different. I knew what I wanted and what I didn't want. The sun is behind the clouds. I knew what I wanted, what I didn't want from a relationship, that kind of thing. And... That taught me a lot as well. So, of course, in my late 20s, from I think 28, 29, that's when I started taking relationships more seriously. That's when I started giving a little bit more of myself, giving more effort, opening myself up uh, a little bit more to my partners and all of that. And it, it was great. Uh, the one thing that I'd always, always told myself was that marriage for me, it's exactly what I say in my marriage video. I'd always told myself that it's not, I don't need a piece of paper. I don't need any of that. That has never changed. Um, and the settling thing just also that I can be one of those uh, uh, women who are married and all of that. Nah, not my life. And that hasn't changed either. So um, just relationships taught me, um, you know, growth from my 20s. I grew up, I realized what I like, what I don't like, what I'll tolerate, what I don't tolerate. Uh, I realized how much it takes to push me, uh, to, 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 um, you know, to, the, to push me to the point of no return when it comes to a relationship, how much it takes to, you know, w whether we work it out or we don't. Um, so I learned a lot there as well. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much where I'm going to end it. I hope this video was in the least bit interesting but those were the experiences the moments the fundamental moments that changed my life definitely changed my life uh for the better really really it was growth it was resilience it was independence um i'm still not perfect with so many other things i'm really not uh but you're constantly ever evolving and if you're at that point in your life where you're thinking what what's my calling what's my purpose what's my whatever you know what my mom once said to me, she used to ask me quite a lot. Really? So disrespectful. My mom used to ask me quite a lot, what do you want to be remembered for? And my answer would always be, from my early 20, from my 18, 19, just off the matric actually, she would ask me that all the time and I would always say to her, I just want to be remembered just for helping even one person. I don't care who I help, I don't care how I help them whether I help them with my words or whether I help them with money or whether I help them with care and nurturing and taking care of them, whatever. I just want to be remembered as the one person who, who just helped, who I changed one person's life, changed how they thought about something. And so if you're in that place where you're questioning your purpose or you're questioning your 20s, like, really, is this it or whatever, it gets better. <laughs> It really does get better. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. Please subscribe, join the channel, uh, join the family. Uh, if this is the kind of content that you would like to see, definitely put down some suggestions down below and I'll be keen to check them out. Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.